Good afternoon and welcome back. I think I can admit it's a little strange to sit in live studio and watch yourself talk about some sensitive issues. That's why I'm really, really excited to welcome three pretty amazing women to come and talk with me this afternoon. Diana Townsend, Lindsay Smith, and Allison Potts were three of our top participants in our DEI challenge. And so I'm thrilled to welcome these ladies here today to talk to me how it went, what were they learned, what was their impression of it. But before I do that, I want us all to take a collective breath and acknowledge this is a challenging subject. Um, from PSC's point of view, we've got some pretty loud voices honestly shouting us from multiple sides that we, they don't want us in this inclusion or in having this conversation, excuse me, or that we're not going too far. So I want to sincerely thank these women for their bravery to come in and talk to hundreds of people about their experience. And I want to encourage our audience to have a very lively chat and to start posing questions for these amazing ladies about this challenge. But also remember that we are doing our best to create a safe space here and to be as kind and as generous as possible. So with that, um, let's meet three of these amazing women, Diana, Lindsay, and Allison. Hello, ladies. It's great to see you. How are you today? Great. Thanks for having us. So much for joining me. I'd love to give you guys each the opportunity to kind of introduce yourself and tell us how did you come upon uh, PSE's 30 Days, 1,000 Actions Challenge? How did you learn about it? What was kind of your first experience? Uh, Diana, do you want to kick us off? So yeah, I was challenged by an old colleague of mine that now works for Earth Animal. So thank you, Earth Animal, for um, getting on board with this firsthand. And whenever I was challenged, I just jumped right on board and did lots of research on it. Um, and then I think within the next day, I emailed our CEO and I was like, this is really something we need to be involved in. Uh, we recently started our own DEI journey at Instinct this past year. So it was perfect timing for us to get involved and continue our education as a company. Um, and it was just a really great experience. So really appreciate that challenging each other to do it. Um, I know inside of our company, we were also challenging each other. So it was a great experience. Let's say intro, quick intro and let us know how you uh, learned about PSE's challenge. Sorry, hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm from Open Farm. Um, I was really excited to join this. I, all of us at Open Farm are really looking for ways how we could better stand up for injustices and learn a lot more. And this challenge was so exciting to participate in. And um, yeah, I, again, I, I kind of like a challenge as well and was really looking towards learning and seeing how I can use um, you know, my privilege is, is something that we're all pretty lucky to have and how I can use that to better stand up for injustice and be much more active in the community. So this kind of came at a perfect time, of course, and really learned a lot through it. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, Allison, Stella and Chewy's kind of jumped into this challenge with both feet. It was pretty impressive. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. So I'm Allison Potts. I'm the chief sales officer here at Stella and Chewy's, and I'm also the executive sponsor of our diversity council. And um, I believe in leading by example. And so um, the challenge was actually brought to my attention by one of our diversity council members. And the entire diversity council decided we're going to go take the challenge. And the feedback was so positive that we challenged the entire company. So. I believe we were north of 13,000 points and had over 120 people kind of jump in and and do it. Um, and it was a great education. I, you know, thank you guys for putting it out there because I think it's, it was a great source of content and I enjoyed it personally as well. All three of you ladies work at companies that really kind of jumped in with both feet and had lots of people participating and um, challenging each other and posting pictures. I'd love to talk about, you know, was this over the virtual water cooler as we were talking about? Um, how was the conversation about it? Were people genuinely uh, open? Allison, do you, you want to tell us how it was working at Stella and Chewy's? Sorry, I just did the same thing. See there, that's Zoom. Um, you know, I'm personally a lifelong learner. And so I love um, 
I love being challenged by new ways to kind of explore things that perhaps I'm I don't know or I'm not exposed to. And I believe that a diverse and inclusive organization is really a better organization. So there were many challenges that made me kind of pause and think. Um, but for me, the the best one was the walk, the walk the line um, exercise, with, which was really about privilege. And that had a profound impact on me because I I made an assumption as to what I thought would be the result, but I was wrong. And um, and anything that surprises me, I you know, as the exercise unfolded, I could only think that I was dying to do this with my own team, and if only to educate others and kind of create awareness. So um, I I mean I just thought that 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 in particular had a profound impact, and probably was behind me driving the rest of the organization to um, to kind of use the words jump in, but to just learn more. And we got um, gr an amazing feedback kind of across our organization of people who really enjoyed the exercises. I'm also glad to say that I am the profound owner of the free coupons from Ben and Jerry. So um, I'm looking forward to to actually bringing those those to help me through this uh, pandemic that we're in for certain. Love that, and I got to be honest. If you've held on to those coupons for this long, um, <laughs> that's some self-control I don't have, girl. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I love what you brought up, Diana. Was there any particular um, action or module that you felt particularly resonated with you? So I know it was a very short video, um, but the flip it to test it really stuck with me. Um, I use that now in almost everything that I think about whether it's um, something I hear from someone, I'm like, okay, if I flip that, would they be saying the same thing? If so, it's fine. If not, that's an issue that needs to be addressed. Um, but I, yeah, I do it with everything. It could be about race, gender, um, you know, any kind of diversity within like my own family as well. Um, but work, you know, just even at the grocery store, it's really easy to just think about it in your head. like if I'm having this thought, if it was someone of the opposite gender, if it was somebody of the opposite race, would it be an issue? And it's just really like, almost like a daily thought now. I, I love that. Wanna, wanna give us your favorite actions? Yeah, for sure. Um, mine was pretty similar as well. I found the flip it to test it was very compelling. Um, and within that as well as like, just kind of understanding how many different implicit bias we have. Um, I, I kind of have already been aware of what implicit bias was, but there was one challenge where it kind of listed like an, a, a huge number of them. And it was just really, it, while it wasn't challenging to complete, because as, as we said, it's like really easy to flip it. Like if you're looking at sports teams and you're flipping the Cleveland Indians to the Cleveland Caucasians, you're kind of it's so obvious, um, but yeah, just kind of re recognizing how many like decades of ingrained overgeneralization we see. Um, it's it's become really easy to call out in the media and everything, but making sure it's like really in my everyday thoughts and interactions with family, friends, um, as well as at work. It's just it's becoming so routine for me um, to stop and recognize um, these stereotypes that I have, even though I feel it, it it's not my personal beliefs, but you just, they just keep coming up and it's been really compelling to call those out and notice them and really redirect your thought processes and changing that. That we should probably, you're right, um, not change the name of the Cleveland sports teams to the Cleveland Caucasians. That might yeah. <laughs> cause a little bit of stir. Well, I, um, I'm really, really grateful to you ladies and I want to give our audience an opportunity um, to ask some questions as well, but, but one last, uh, opportunity for me to pick your brains. Um, where would you like the pet industry to kind of go uh, from here? If you could ma wave the magic wand, would it be that every you know company has starts having a diversity, equity, and inclusion resource? Um, is that we, as a industry as a whole, would start kind of having these conversations more often? Or what would you love to see happen? Um, Lindsay, why don't you kick this one off? Yeah, for sure. I, I think we definitely need to be having more of the challenge. I think recognizing it is the first step. I think all of us as a brand has a huge responsibility to use our voices and our platforms to reflect change and progress that we want to see. Um, our consumers expect it as they really should. 
Um, also like loving pets is it's universal. It's, we all do it. Um, so it's really important for us as companies to, again, use our platforms and our voice, um, to kind of shift from being so focused on, we were previously so focused on pet nutrition and keeping pets happy and healthy. And now it's hard to shift towards humans, but I think it's, it's, it's definitely really important to keep learning and keep continuing into these challenges. I love that. Let's pass the magic wand to Allison. You know, I would say, although I don't believe that the pet industry has a unique um, opportunity, I think it's much broader than that, but um, the best solution for any company is to make it a priority and to gain the support, certainly, of senior leadership and truly embrace diversity of thought, because I think that enables all companies to, you know, have a better culture and drive our thinking and our expanded growth. But um I always think education makes a difference and interactive education, which is what you provided in this challenge, makes an even bigger difference because people are, um, you know, more aware, more attuned. They can do it on their in their own world, but share with others. And I I personally really enjoyed the actions. I loved reading what other people thought. It was, you know, a little bit of stalking um, to watch as people commented. But I like that kind of opinions and views. It grounds me and I like to peruse those. Um, and I think that that just kind of expands our whole thinking and what we bring in totality to the industry for certain. Uh, is your magic wand already waved or where do we go from here? Uh, so you, you mean personally, so at Stella & Chewy's, no. We are on our journey just like everyone else for certain. We established an in-house diversity council, again, with the support of leadership. And, and like I mentioned before, I am the executive sponsor. We have a mission and a cadence, you know, to make our own difference in our own workplace. But one example of how this group um, is already making a difference is they've started a reverse mentoring session where um, we have all different levels of the organization that are part of the council. They reverse mentor each one of the executive team to kind of share their perspective around culture and positives and concerns um, on, in the broader organization. And it gives us kind of an objective view. It allows us to gain insight and take ac actions and, and get the support of everyone. Um, I mean, I really believe that every company needs to decide their own journey but and decide where they are in their journey and their um, their readiness and acceptance of it. But we certainly at Stella & Chewy's have prioritized diversity and inclusion because we believe it's the right thing to do. Um, but I like uh, another example is we've also taken a local approach. We partnered with the Milwaukee Urban League and you talked about, um, I believe in, in the video with Melissa about how you're making it go local in Colorado. I think that that is just in, as important. We um, developed a new transportation initiative which will launch in January of 21. And it allows people that are residing outside the city of Milwaukee um, to get to have opportunities to access higher paying jobs that are located in kind of the surrounding area where transportation for them is really limited. So there's not one magic wand here for certain, um, but I do think, you know, taking bits and pieces and snippets and actions makes us all, you know, better and, and a better environment to work in for certain. Love that. Yeah, it's a large, complex issue that we're not going to solve tomorrow. But uh, Diana, <laughs> I'll let you take the last pass of the magic wand. Yeah, so I mean, I think I agree with both of the other um, Allison and Lindsay on their comments of it starts with a discussion. Um, I know at Instinct, we started with a quick discussion about what we wanted as a company and then established a diversity working group to get the ball rolling, we were challenged with um, like 30 day returns. Let, let's see what's short term and long term goals. Um, then it, it transitioned into an inclusion group, which is very similar to what Allison's talking about with uh, their diversity council. And just going from there, like little things of just um, eliminating our Good Friday holiday and turning that into a floating holiday so everyone can celebrate on their own accord. Um, just little things go a long way, and it's that little change that makes a huge difference. I love that. Well, I want to invite uh, Caitlin and the audience to this conversation. Caitlin, how is our uh, chat box going? Do we have any questions for these brave and amazing ladies we've got here today? 
Hi, Melissa. Thanks so much. Um, and again, thank you to all of you for participating. This has been a really um, incredible conversation. We've got a very active chat room um, all throughout this, so I'm happy to send over some additional questions. Uh, I would like to start today out with a poll. So go ahead if you're in the audience and click on the poll button. Um, the question is just whether or not you participated in the DEI challenge. Um, and I'll read the results of that poll. But uh, before I do that, I wanted to um, ask a quick question um, of each of you, which is how did you encourage others inside of your company to participate? Did you create incentives um, or what were kind of the key ways that you um, encouraged others uh, to join in with your enthusiasm? Yeah, I'll start. We um, we really started with the, the the direction and the link came from our diversity council. So um, we had one person on the diversity council that raised their hand. They wrote kind of a short, hey, here's what uh, here's what we would encourage everybody to do. And these are the type of things that are out there and the momentum started. And then uh, again, I think it is important to have that executive support. So I went over the top and um, being probably a little bit competitive, I, I put out a challenge there to um, better yourself and learn more um, and away we went. And I, I mean, I, I can't stress enough. I personally, I enjoyed it. It's what I did with my cup of coffee first thing in the morning. I loved watching the TED Talks. Um, so I think that, you know, that's the feedback that we got broadly across the entire organization, which was great. Thanks so much. Um, for the rest of you, can you share more about what you also did um, to encourage participation inside the company if you created any additional incentives? Yeah, I, at Open Farm, um, I, we were all really encouraged, and I think we were we were constantly looking for ways how we could help, like starting like book clubs, watching as many documentaries as we could and stuff. So I think everyone was naturally incentivized to do it. Um, I think we all, again, wanted to learn, but also maybe a little bit competitive. So we wanted to kind of combine those two things. And, and honestly, everyone just kind of jumped right in and was really just encouraging everyone just through messages such as like Slack or, or emailing everyone. It was actually pretty organic and natural how we wanted to participate because it was a conversation we were already having. Um, so this really amplified the conversation to bring up more ways how we could help and, and diversify ourselves as a company. Yeah, and I'm going to echo right off of that um, same. Our company is very uh, involved already since we started our DEI journey earlier in the year and bringing this to the discussion table was just an added bonus and everyone just jumped on board right away. Um, I know whether it was tagging each other on the actual DEI challenge or um, a friendly trash talking almost on teams of well, I haven't seen you on here. What's going on? Oh, I'm doing soul searching. You know, how can we talk? <laughs> know that, um, you know, I am a proud member of the LGBT organization and I had, you know, coworkers reach out to me and ask me questions that maybe they weren't feeling confident um, asking others. And the same was reciprocated. You know, I had a lot of conversations about race that I hadn't had before, so. Yeah, thanks so much for adding that in. So uh, just quickly, um, I wanted to give you some perspective on our audience. Um, and we have about 58% of attendees today did participate in the challenge, where 42% didn't. So it's about a 50-50 here um, in terms of people who experienced it for themselves. And I just want to um, echo uh, a lot of what was said, because for me, um, we asked the our team and our staff also to participate. So not only did we say, hey, we want to issue this challenge to the industry and partner with WeSpire on the platform. But we also asked all of our team to actually participate in this. We encouraged our board members to join our team um, if they weren't joining their own team to participate as well, because there's so much learning and education. And I really feel like that's a great first step. I think for me, I was really nervous about joining this conversation. Um, a lot of because it's you know I am so privileged um, and I, I sometimes feel like people are eager to um, bring you down um, and to poke holes and you have to be perfect in order to get involved and this expectation of perfection I think really discourages everyone from being brave um, and having a conversation that they haven't had before or just asking an honest question of people who are different than us to understand how they're different um, so that it's not just an unspoken hush hush thing um, where people aren't willing to just ask and learn. Um, and I think that's, uh, you know, all of you have been so brave uh, to use your voices um, inside of your company. One of the questions um, we got from the audience is, 
you know, talking internally to our teams and those are familiar people can be um, a little bit easier than talking externally as a brand to our consumers. I'm wondering if any of you have insights to share as to how um, or if you've discussed as a brand how you might do that externally with pet parents as well. Yeah, so if you guys don't mind, I'll um, take a first stab. I know I've um, had many a conversation with our marketing department, Insight Instinct, um, and I know that our senior level leadership has done the same as well. So um, they've done an excellent job of communicating out, you know, whether it's the company stance on um, POC or LGBT. Um, you know, we weren't able to do a pride organization this year um, because of COVID but we were still able to get some words out about supporting the LGBT um, community, supporting POC community. Um, and it's not without its own reservations. I don't think anyone's surprised to hear that you get the occasional comment of you're in pet food, just keep it going. Um, but that's, I would like to think that that's more of a minority than a majority. So, um, but yeah, we haven't had any negativity that I'm aware of, um, just people making um, questions about like why now what's going on and I think that's just going to continue into 2021 you know why now what's going on as Kevin said earlier it's going to become a trend yeah no for for us um, yes we've had a lot of communication certainly internally um, externally I've actually I encouraged uh, all of our distributor partners and our key retailers to participate in this challenge we have um, something called a distributor um, a retailer advisory board, and we've actually spent a little time with them talking about, you know, what they see in their stores and how they're, you know, kind of communicating with their staff. I agree with you, Diana. It's about having the conversation first. Um, and I think that each organization has to, you know, hey, I'd like to encourage everyone to do it, but you have to really feel like where you are in the, the journey um and where this is a priority because the worst thing that you can do is say that this is a priority and then not action against it um and that's where we were really careful we wanted to make sure hey if we said that we were going to start affiliate groups that we were going to start affiliate groups because we didn't want to let down our own people um i think you know when you talk about larger pet parents and that kind of audience i mean this is a common subject that's happening out in the world right now certainly you know, with the, the overall leadership that we have. Um, and I, I think lots of companies are kind of taking this as a, a time to talk to their own employees, whether or not you're in pet or not. Um, and I certainly, with the all the years of experience that I have, I this is my fourth diversity council that I'm either sitting on, started, or leading. Um, so it, it is definitely happening in other industries, and that's where we need um, the combined efforts I've also spent a lot of time in or in front of organizations like we or um, national leadership uh, of women organizations talking about diversity and, you know, how my experience just as a woman and how I've kind of moved up the ranks or the challenges that I've had overall. And I mean, that's all we can do is talk about our own experiences, but it allows you too to understand the struggles that everyone else is experiencing. Um, and they're not too different, right? They're, I just think, again, getting people to really talk about them and talk about how you're going to solution them is, is the way that's going to get us to a better place. Yeah, I, so I agree and echo um, everything that everyone's been saying. Um, we in, Internally, we've been taking a lot of learnings and actions and making sure it's diversity and inclusion is woven into everything from our hiring practices to our business to our culture um, but as for externally um, again very similar but really want to make sure like with our marketing department and everything that that our practices are really reflective of the world that we want to see that's full of diversity and inclusion and one that's truly inclusive and equitable for all our consumers as well as ourselves Great, um, so we do have one more poll um, for the audience today. So go ahead and click on that poll um, and get some answers generated in there. The question is, where are you in your journey towards diversity, equity, and inclusion? And I'd like to ask that um, that question to our panelists as well. Um, but first, I thought I would just share um, a little bit about where we are in PSC's journey. Um, this is really 
uh, you know, for me, and I can only, I, you know, I can't speak for all of my staff, um, but for me personally, I still feel like I'm very early in my journey. Um, you know, I started with education, uh, our team's reading books like How to Be um, an Anti-Racist, um, and really just educating myself about all of um, the issues related to justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, um, but then also realizing that we need to form this foundation with others in our industry. The Pet Sustainability Coalition alone cannot massively um, shift diversity, equity, and inclusion without participation of our other trade associations, all of the companies, and all of the individuals in this industry as well. And we have a lot of work to do. Um, our industry is not very diverse. I cannot tell you, um, you know, coming together with our board and trying to identify hey, who are um, you know, people of color um, that we can invite to this conversation to take a leadership role? We've seen um, just recently uh, CEOs with diversity, both gender um, and race, uh, come into our industry and within our membership groups, and it's been such a celebration to see some of that starting to shift. But I also just want an issue, an invitation to the whole industry, um, including other organizations like ours who um, feel that our industry would be vibrant and thriving if we had a greater diversity um, among us. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and check in on that poll. And let's see. What we've got. All right, it looks like um, the majority of people are gathering information and educating themselves. And I think that's an absolutely great place um, to start and then to start thinking about our influence um, on others. And, um, you know, I think something I'd like to ask of all the panelists is um, tell us a little bit about the platform itself. So, you know, Melissa talked about how one of her favorite things was the social aspect to it of feeling like you weren't the only one who was watching TED Talks and kind of in this journey alone, but that yourself, but also your peers and competitors in this space were also posting and, you know, being active. And talk about um, the platform a little bit and if you feel like that um, made a difference in, in really catalyzing change for our industry. Yeah, I found it. I found it really. I, I really enjoyed the social aspect as well. I think again, I'm still very early personally in my like learnings and everything for um, how we can definitely make this woven into my life with my friends, my families, and my customers. But um, I, I actually really enjoyed the social aspect. I kind of felt um, very reserved and shy before. Like uh, even this this challenge has really encouraged me. You know, understanding how asking to pronounce someone's name it's not rude, and how people really respect it. So. I, I really enjoyed hearing about other people's experiences um, and it really kind of brought me out of my shell as I think a lot of us feel that we don't know where to start. Um, we don't, we want to be perfect, but just kind of really understanding and accepting that it is going to be uncomfortable. And this is the first step that we have to take has been really, the, this challenge has really shone, um, shown, oh my gosh, um, it has really like put that out for me that it's it's we're all dealing with it and we're all in our early stages for a lot of us so it was really helpful thanks yeah i mean i thought the platform was great i think you provided a place to um you know kind of view like the ted talks and the exercises to increase awareness and identify biases and the articles and books about diversity of thought. I mean, I I downloaded a lot of those, even like the children's books that I thought were really interesting. And I have a daughter who's a third grade teacher and thought that might be an interesting one for her to bring um, to. So I think those little gifts like you were talking about, Lindsay, allows you to kind of share with your family and friends because that's mm -hmm. your network. Um, I, I, you know, one of the things that really surprised me, um, I watched one of the TED Talks who, had a senior level woman, she was a head of HR. I don't know if you guys remember this challenge, this, mm -hmm. this TED talk, but she talked about how she was actually harder on women. And I personally have always found myself to, or thought of myself as somebody who is encouraging other women that you can kind of break through that ceiling. Um, and then I had to kind of sit back and reflect, am I harder on my female colleagues than my male colleagues, um, you know, both, both up and down our organization? So I thought that that was great that the platform, um, you know, kind of got us to stop and think about what, you know, self-evaluate ourselves, put it that way. Um, but the other thing that I really liked is that as I commented, I got so many comments from the broader industry 
and so many comments from you know what we do every day is be competitors right so to watch and view people be encouragement you know be a sign of hey we're in this together be a sign of hey we're all learning it together i i think it made it a very not uncomfortable conversation and it allowed us all to kind of encourage each other to we might you know compete every day as we walk into a pet store but we still are all in the same community of wanting inclusivity and i think that that was a great part of the challenge what incredible words there um you know i think letting go of our competition and realizing the ways we can work together to drive industry-wide improvement that's what the sustainability movement is all about so really appreciate you sharing that sure all right so um, we are just wrapping up. We're at uh, time now. Um, so thank you so much to everybody for entering questions into the chat box. I just wanted to add some, um, you know, I'll follow up with Melissa that this is really just the beginning of our journey. Um, we have planned tools and resources with the expansion of our toolkit. We're now offering diversity, equity, and inclusion training in partnership um, with a, a company here in Denver. Um, and so if you're eager to get on this journey yourself, um, we're happy to connect you with great organizations to help you do that. Um, and someone asked, are we going to do this challenge again? And I will say we are absolutely looking at in 2021 how, um, like the success that we had, um, how do we expand um, our work on this platform to bring all of our companies together in ways that are really measurable, that are, you know, over the next month, you can just commit to this one thing and we can all start to shift the industry forward through our little micro actions that really add up to big change. Um, so we are absolutely committed to continuing the conversation around diversity, equity, and Inclusion, getting you the tools and resources you need to advance your business and your own person um, and uh, providing the growth that we would all like to see for our industry. So thank you uh, to the three of you for joining us um, and for your courage and bravery uh, to participate and to join us here today with 500 people um, to talk about it live on stage. Melissa, back to you. Thank you, Caitlin. And uh, thank you, uh, Allison, Lindsay, and Deanna for being honest around a Difficult conversation. Um, I'm going to invite you all to just take a 15 minute collective deep breath as we kind of change topics and zones and. <sighs> okay, moving on.